the radiant heat output parameter uh, is an important definition of the performance or the required or expected performance of a fire detector when we're performing fire and gas mapping. 50 kilowatts is typical, 40 to 50 kilowatts is typical and representative of the fire size that most of the equipment vendors publish in their, their user manuals, their cone of vision data as per FM3260. Now, the radiant heat output is a proxy for how big of a fire do I want to detect. If I always wanted to detect a one foot by one foot pan fire, I would just use the information that's supplied by the equipment vendor directly from the FM3260 data. But sometimes I want to detect a smaller fire. So in a very high risk area with very expensive pieces of equipment, like a zone with compression equipment in it. Compression equipment is very expensive and the risk is high. So I want to be able to detect the fire and take an action while it's still small. But if I'm in a very large warehouse uh, with relatively low risk, uh, inexpensive materials, I can wait until the fire is a little bit bigger before I take an executive action uh, to suppress the fire, put the fire out, and uh, that will allow me to use less equipment and, and cover a larger area without really impacting the risk that greatly. So not all zones are the same. Sometimes you want to detect a smaller fire, sometimes it's okay to wait until the fire has gotten a little bit larger before you detect it, and that's going to have a profound impact on the coverage and the number of detectors that you're going to need. And the parameter that we use to define how big of a fire do I actually want to detect is the radiant heat output. So uh, radiant heat output is something that we can calculate using a lot of quantitative consequence analysis equations and tools, but in general that number is going to come from corporate fire and gas philosophy documents that are going to define how big of a fire that I want to detect. There are three common fire types uh, that are used in industry. There's a high risk zone small fire, there's a medium risk zone medium sized fire, and there's a low risk zone large fire. A typical number for a high risk area, small fire, so I want to detect a, a fire when it's small because the risk is high in that zone, would be given by something like 10 or 12 kilowatts. And that would roughly, roughly be the size of this fire that I'm going to generate right here. So this fire that I just created. Uh, is going to be roughly a 10 to 12 kilowatt fire. So this is the size of fire that I would want a fire to detector to detect. If you were in a grade A zone, high risk area. So you'll see that this fire is actually substantially smaller than the fire that we're going to want to detect for a medium size zone. And the fire size that the equipment vendors are concerned with when they do that FM3260 test is a lot bigger than this. So this fire is relatively small and the fire detector is not going to be able to detect or see this fire from the same distance as is published in the vendor data because the vendor data is based on a larger fire, a one foot by one foot pan fire that we're going to look at next. For a medium fire size, industry typically uses something around 40 to 50 kilowatts, which is representative of the one foot by one foot pan fire, shown here in the uh, Conexus uh, pan fire test apparatus. So if you want to get uh, an example of typical 
for 40 to 50 kilowatts or a medium size fire, you'd be looking at something like this. Now, this is a medium size fire. A large fire would be something like about 200 to 300 kilowatts, which is going to be about the size of the TV screen that I've been working with to the right here. So uh, with that, this is a very good representation of the different fire sizes that we're intending to detect. And this, that what you're looking at right here, this is typical of a medium fire, and this is also typical of what equipment vendors will provide you data on. So you'll see that this is significantly larger than the 10 kilowatt fire that would be representative of a zone A or a higher risk area. So the information for how big of a fire are we looking for is going to be something that's going to be designated in that radiant heat output. And it's an, an important parameter in the fire and gas mapping because the smaller the fire, the harder it is to detect. And that would require more detectors that are more closely uh, placed together than if you were looking for larger fires, which are going to be easier to detect. And again, radiant heat output, T 10 to 12 for a small fire, 40 to 50 for a medium fire, 250 to 300 is typical for a large fire in a low risk zone.